you have a smartwatch? Well, you can control your Android smartphone with it by downloading Simpleware. You just set it as a tile, and then you can control your phone's flashlight, toggle certain settings like the Wi-Fi, do not disturb mode, and even remotely lock your device. It also comes in handy to check your phone's battery and charging status. It's not anything earth shattering, but it's still something that you can brag to your iPhone buddies about since Apple Watches can't do this. By now, we've all heard of ChatGPT, the advanced AI-based chatbot that can do anything from completing math problems to writing college essays to even just answering live questions. But with SmartTyper, you can bring the same AI to most apps with a text field since it puts the AI engine into your phone's keyboard. Simply type out what you want it to do, hit the big red button, and SmartTyper will take care of the rest. I will admit the keyboard isn't as easy to use as Gboard, so you will experience a lot of mistypes, but the developer says he created this app in just two days and he's planning to improve the UI soon. Still, it can do all the heavy lifting for you for your next email, tweet, or even your Tinder bio. Hey, Valentine's Day is coming up, you might need some extra help. And that's just a few apps out of the 10 that are coming up for this month's series of the best Android apps for February 2023. If by the end you download a single app, be sure to drop a thumbs up to show your support. And if you download two or more, get subscribed with the notification bell turned on so you can be among the first to catch more great videos just like this every week. By the way, I just dropped some new spectacular widgets and wallpapers that are super eye-catching on my Patreon. There are even some that are a concept for the upcoming Android 14 widgets. It'll definitely take your home screen setup to the next level. Jumping back into it, the next app I have for you is called Inner App Manager. Inner is a great looking super robust app that goes way beyond just keeping track of your apps and uninstalling them quickly in badges. You can use it to see how many trackers are in each app you have installed, learn about your most used apps so you can cut back, check each app's permissions and activities, and a lot more. The app's UI is also very beautiful, it's free and open source, so definitely give it a try. You ever hang your clothes outside to dry but aren't sure how long you should leave them out there for? Well, with Laundry Timer, you can get accurate estimations since it'll check your location, weather forecast, and the different fabrics that are used in most clothes. It also takes into account your location's temperature, solar energy, humidity, wind speed, and cloud cover, along with allowing you to set separate timers for each different material. Very simple app, but a first of its kind. Music lovers, listen up. Rewind lets you listen to any popular music from any decade or even a single year. It feels like you're jumping back in time and listening to the radio from that era. Maybe you grew up in the 90s and want to jam out to those different types of songs, or listen to legendary music from the original Woodstock back in 1969. Rewind's got you covered all the way back to the 60s. The only downside is that Rewind only lets you listen to a 30 second sample of a song before suggesting you check out the full song on Tidal. So that kind of sucks, but I like to use it to discover new types of songs that I never heard before and that I may like. After all, every one of these were on the top charts at one point, so you should find something good out of it. Another form of entertainment are books, and with an app called Mine, you can get access to over 60,000 eBooks to download for free. And it's perfectly legal because it grabs them from a website called Project Gutenberg. It's an online library that keeps all the older classics whose US copyrights have expired. The Mine app just serves as a middleman to make it easier to browse the giant list of books with an amazing looking UI. You can search for specific titles, look through categories, read a summary about them before downloading, and even download the eBooks right into the Google Books app. Pretty amazing. Switching over to the games, first up we have Ninja Must Die, which is a super impressive, fast paced auto runner game. You play as a young ninja named Pepper and are on a mission to uncover the truth of the ninja realm. Along the way, there are a ton of weapons and relics to pick up to equip yourself with and unique skills to use to fight off the bosses. There's even a multiplayer feature available too. One of the really cool things I liked is the ability to leave comments throughout the game for other users to see. I don't know that I've seen that in too many other games. It's got amazing graphics, music, and artwork, Plus it's free to download and play, so why not give it a try? Kart Rider Drift is a fun racing game that looks and feels a lot like Mario Kart. It is multiplayer, so you are playing with other people, 
Plus, you get to race through different settings, from hot deserts to frozen tundras. Plus, it gets pretty intense since everyone can pick up power-ups along the way to stop or slow down all of your opponents on the racetrack. The only thing I will complain about is that the controls could be a little better, especially when needing to drift. Still, it's a free game to download and play, but in-app purchases are available to enhance your racing. Continuing the theme of games with familiar characters, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge is an old popular game ported into Android by Netflix. It's excellent and in so many ways looks exactly like how it used to look on a Game Boy when I was little. The graphics are purposely pixelated with the same gameplay, but of course with some minor modern tweaks and refinements to make it easier to play on a touchscreen device. Even the game's soundtrack is a throwback. You can play it solo or with up to four people locally. It's a ton of fun and gives you a challenge to complete the different missions. But like I said, it's been ported by Netflix, so you can only play with it if you have a Netflix subscription. But the good news is once you're in, you're in. There are no fees, no in-app purchases, no ads, and no content locked away. So Koabunga, dude, and go give it a try. North Kingdom Siege Castle is a really fun tower defense game. It's fun to try developing and setting up your defense options for protecting your tower from the oncoming siege. Plus, you have to be very meticulous where you put down your towers and which ones you upgrade because you only have so many materials and money. Once you run out of wood, then you can't build anything more. Just cross your fingers and hope your center towers doesn't get destroyed. The only downside to this game is that it has very intrusive ads. Otherwise, it's a fun, casual game that you can play offline. So there you go, six apps and four games for you to try out for February 2023. Remember, if you download at least one app, you need to drop a thumbs up on this video. And if you download a two or more, you need to get subscribed with the notification bell turned on. Don't forget to check out my Patreon for those amazing widgets and wallpapers. Also, I'll tag the smartphone that I used in this video, which is the Pixel 7 Pro within the YouTube product tag feature sponsored by YouTube themselves. Thanks again for sticking with me to the end and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kapow!